Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and in vlog number 41, I mentioned that I had printed my own deli papers using my printer and some of my designs from my art journal that had been scanned into my computer. So I thought I would make a little bit more of a detailed video showing you how to do this step by step. Now, one warning about doing this. One, this paper is not porous, and the ink that's probably in your printer is probably dye-based, which means that when it gets wet, it will run. So when you first run this through your printer, leave it. Let it sit for about 10 minutes so it dries. And then we'll talk about spraying a fixative on it uh, to make it waterproof when you're using it as a collage element on your art journal pages. So here are two that I have created. Um, this one. It was actually an image that I captured and put to my computer uh, from Google Images. It's just a basic nondescript script background. And this is actually a page from one of my art journals. And what I usually like to do is to take pictures or scan the actual page into my computer so I can make cards out of them later. But they'll also work for this technique. So what I'm going to do, and this involves a fair amount of technology to show you all of this, so several different cameras, is I'm going to take you to my computer next and show you how I set this up so I can print it. Then I'll take you to my printer and show the actual printing process. And then I'll take you back to my workbench and show you how I prepare the deli papers once they're printed for use in an art journal. Okay, so what I've done is I've opened up my word processing program and I'm going to find the file that I already previously scanned into the computer and I'm going to insert it. So I found my file, I just click on it and then I'm going to click on insert and that's going to put it into my word processing program. Now I need to change the size so I'm going to adjust it to full both height and width and now I have the whole page. Now I'm just putting in a second one and I'm just loading it up just like I would with any graphic, making it full size. Now, so you can see these a little better, I will go to um, full page view and properties. So when I go to print it, I could print it at high, but I'm going to leave it at standard because I don't want the ink to run. So I'll come back and show you how this works in just a moment. Okay, so I've loaded up my deli paper into my printer. And if you look here, what I've done is I actually have three sheets of deli paper in here cut to size, but I'm only going to put one in. But I'm going to leave some copy paper in here as well, just so that it'll be easily grabbed by the printer. So now I'm going to go over to the computer and I'm going to hit print. Okay, so the computer's now sending it to the printer, and in a second here, it should start to print. And here we go. Now, hopefully, it'll pull the paper in. We'll wait for it. Should happen here in just a second. And here we go. Yep, pulled it right in. Now, of course, I've got the print quality set at standard. Um, because I don't want to put too much ink onto the page because it will come out wet and if I put more ink on it, it will smear as it's printing. So let's see how good a job it did on this. Now the reason it sent out a second page is because it thought this was a two-page document, but let's take a look here. And that turned out pretty good but I don't want to touch it and this is why I leave the one inch border all the way around be so I have something to hang on to so I'm going to take this and just put it to the side and that's kind of a light image so what I'm going to do is I'll show you what happens if I adjust the setting so that I have a higher quality print so I'm just over here at the computer doing that which I know you can't see and the settings will be different on your printer. So I've set it for high quality as opposed to standard and I'm hitting print and we'll just see, oops, and I didn't put the paper in. Okay, just made it. Now you see it's taking a little longer to print because it's making smaller lines of color across the page and so it's putting more ink onto it. Now this may 
cause this to um, blur as it's being printed. And if that's the case, sometimes residue can be on your rollers afterwards and you'll need to run a few sheets of blank copy paper through uh, just to clean those up. It won't hurt your printer though. And we'll see what we get this time. And of course, because it's putting more ink onto the deli paper, it is going to take longer for it to dry. But as I said, it should be fairly dry within about 10 minutes. Now I think, just by seeing what's coming out right now, that I am getting a better quality. So let's just take a look here. And yeah, I got a little better quality here. So there's a little bit more ink. So that's fine. I'm just going to set that to the side and I'm going to print one more. And I'll load in my deli paper first before I forget to do that. And I'm going to try another little experiment here with the quality. I'm actually going to put it at up to the photo, glossy photo paper quality. That will put the maximum amount of ink on this and we'll just see how that works out. So I'm just adjusting that setting on my printer, in my printer properties. And I'm going to premium photo paper, glossy. And I'm going to set the uh, quality also to high. So it's a double whammy here. So this could be a disaster or this may work. We'll see what happens. So I've sent it to the printer and we'll see what comes out. Now you can see this is taking a little bit longer to process because there's much more ink going on to the deli paper and I'm hoping it's not going to uh, streak or blur, but we'll soon find out. And while we're waiting, let's just compare the quality of these two. So you can see there's definitely a difference in the quality of the two. It's not major but it might make a difference. Now, since you're using this as background paper anyways, maybe not that big a deal. And we just have to be patient as this works its way through the printer. Now, I could speed this up on the video, but I thought I should do it in real time to give you a sense of how long this actually takes. Actually, it doesn't take all that long. It's just that we've been playing around with settings here. Maybe I should sing a song while we're waiting for that. No, that might not be a good idea. Now, you did notice that when the second page came through here, I've got, uh, this is regular copy paper, I've got some bleeding of the ink on here. That's cleaning up the edges of the rollers. So it's always a good idea after you've printed a bunch of these papers to maybe run a few pieces of copy paper through your printer just to clean up the rollers a little bit so they don't smudge uh, future printing projects. Again, it really all depends on the type of printer you have and how the paper goes into it. My paper is fed from the rear, but some printers are in a tray uh, or the papers in a tray below and you can still use that um, it doesn't really matter just as long as the rollers can get a grip onto the deli paper um, and again that's why I use a pile of copy paper uh, in behind and I only put one sheet of deli paper in at a time reason for that is the deli paper can sort of stick together and two pieces could be pulled through at the same time and that might cause a paper jam. Now I haven't tried it, but I think you could do the same thing on tracing paper because tracing paper has kind of the consistency of deli paper. So that would probably work as well if you don't happen to have deli paper. And it's coming. It's taking its time. This is the slowest print speed because we're doing it on photo glossy paper quality and on high quality. So double whammy here. 
so we'll get a much darker image and I'm just hoping that it doesn't go blurry on me but we'll find out so shortly kind of like watching paint dry isn't it but as I said I want you to get the full feel for this so we're almost there we're almost done and then we'll compare the three different settings to see if there is a great difference in quality. And we're still printing away here. Now, of course, I'm doing these as full size 8.5 by 11 with a 1 inch margin. You could do them any size you want because, again, it's just resizing the graphic uh, to whatever size. So if you have smaller pieces of deli paper, you could do smaller ones. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, definitely more ink on the paper here. Um, let's hold it up against the other two. So my first one on draft mode or on standard mode, second one on high mode, and the third one on photo glossy paper. So you can see a definite difference between them. And of course, again, you don't want to touch these with your hands. You want them to sit, let them sit and dry for about 10 minutes or so. So once they've dried, I'll come back and show you what to do with them next to make them waterproof. Okay, all three of my deli prints now are dry. Um, I let them air dry for about 15 minutes. It took a little longer than I expected, especially the one with the most ink on it, which I figured it would. And I also took a heat gun to them um, to make sure that they're fairly dry before I put on this co clear coat. And I'm using a low order clear matte coat from Krylon. And this is great um, for preserving this. Now you can get this in a gloss, but I prefer the matte finish. So we just spray these lightly. And that's all we need. Now we're just going to let these dry and this takes about five or ten minutes for that too. And again you can apply your heat gun to it. So now the three that I've made are dry. Now it does take a little longer than five minutes because the spray will bead up on your deli paper and you can use a heat gun on this or just let it air dry but it's going to probably take maybe leave it for about 30 minutes to be on the safe side if you're air drying it. Um, if you're going to heat gun it then that'll probably take you about 10 minutes uh, with it. It depends on how thick you get the spray onto this. Now my recommendation is do a couple of light coats as opposed to one thick coat and hold your spray uh, about mm, a good 10 inches away from it. I did not do that on mine because I didn't have the physical room because of the way my camera is positioned and so it got a little thicker so it took a little longer to dry. Um, but I also want to show you the difference between the gloss and the matte. So you can see the shine that you get on the one with the uh, gloss spray and whereas with the matte you don't get that kind of shine, which is probably the preferable um, type of spray to use uh, if you're using this as background paper on an art journal. Now, speaking of that, let's give it the final test. I told you that the ink is water soluble <clears throat> that comes from your printer. And the reason we're spraying it with that uh, clear coat is to make it watertight. So we're going to just take this little uh, piece. This is my wipe off journal where I just put any extra things into it. Um, and eventually I'll have all kinds of background papers in here to use as a journal. And I'm getting out my gel matte medium, <clears throat> excuse me, because that's what we use most regularly for this kind of thing. And I'm just going to put a little bit down here on this page. If I can get it out of the bottle. It is there. I'm just going to brush it. And just do to this exactly what I would normally do if I was making an actual art journal background. I'm just going to tear a strip of this off. Put that to the side. And of course, I've got this board around here, but I don't need that anymore. 
I left that on there for handling purposes. Okay, lay it down. And as you can see, I'll add some more. I do not have any of the ink running on this at all. So the spray does. Um, well, I may have got a little bit right there, but maybe that part wasn't completely dry. But, you know, it doesn't matter when it's a background anyways. But there you go. So it works like a charm. So in a pinch, if you don't want to get out all your jelly plates and that kind of thing and spend hours making background papers, if you've already got some things scanned into your computer or if you go to Google Images and download some images from that, you can create printed deli papers using your printer. So I hope this was useful for you and go ahead, experiment, have fun. Bye-bye.